In this lesson, we'll take a look at the tangent ratio. And if we review back to uh, a topic from the grade 9 academic course, if you have a right angle triangle and the sides labeled the rise and the run, remember that the slope is the ratio of the length of the rise side to the run. So slope is rise over run. Now in any right triangle, if we call this the angle theta, the angle theta has a lot to do with how steep this line is, this hypotenuse is here. And the larger the slope, the bigger the angle. The smaller the angle, the shallower the slope, or the smaller the slope. Now when we have right triangles and we have an angle theta here, the side directly opposite from the angle theta is often labeled the opposite side instead of the rise. And the side that's in the right triangle that's beside the angle, that's not the hypotenuse, it's the hypotenuse up here, the side that's beside the angle that I'm calling the run right now can also be called the adjacent side. The word adjacent means beside. So in this right triangle for this angle theta, this rise side can also be called opposite and the run side the adjacent side. And so the slope is actually the ratio of not just rise over run, but we could call it opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now another symbol for slope is actually the tan of this angle theta. Uh, slope and tan of the angle theta mean exactly the same thing. And so this second statement that just come down has just come down here means the same thing as slope is rise over run. And uh, this is actually a terminology from trigonometry. The tan of the angle is defined to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side in any right triangle. And so that's how you calculate the tan of any angle. And again, tan, the tan of an angle means the same thing as the slope. In the example number one, the bottom part of the page, we're asked to determine the tangent ratio for angle theta in each, each triangle. And the one in A here, here's the angle theta. So, and this side's 10 and this side's four. So rewriting my tan theta equals, it equals the opposite side over the adjacent side, and that's my abbreviation for opposite and adjacent. Now, for this angle theta, the opposite side would be the 10. It's the side that's directly across on the other side of the triangle from the angle theta. So 10 is the opposite side, so 10 is gonna go in the numerator here, and the four is the adjacent side because it's right beside the angle. So we'll substitute four in place of adjacent here. So the tan of the angle is 10 divided by four. Now, I'm gonna reduce this, 10 fourths reduces to two fifths. And we could also write that as a decimal, five divided by two or 10 divided by four is 2.5. So the tan the angle is 5 halves, or 2.5. In B, again, rewriting uh, tan theta is opposite side divided by adjacent. In this triangle, this is the angle theta. So the opposite side would be the 3. And the adjacent side is the 15. It's right beside the angle theta. And so substituting 3 in place of opposite and 15 in place of adjacent, we get tan theta equals 3 fifths. And 3 fifths reduces to sorry, 3 fifteenths reduces to 1 fifth, or as a decimal to 0 0.2. Flipping over to the second page, in example two, we're asked to determine the tangent ratio using a calculator. So we're asked to evaluate the tan of 15 degrees. And if you have any scientific calculator, and I'm gonna use the virtual one on the, on the computer here, all we're actually plugging in the calculator is typing in tan, and then 15 degrees. And the tan of 15 degrees is 0.2679, and there's more decimal places. I'll normally round to four decimal places, so I'll write 0.2679. So there's my 0.2679. If I want to find the tan of 50 degrees, I would type in tan 50 degrees. And so there's 1.191, and then this is round to eight. Again, I'll round to four decimal places, so 1.1918. And the last one is tan of 82 degrees. So we would type in tan 82, close the bracket, hit enter, and you get 7.115, and this is round to four, 7.1154. 
and so I would suggest you use your graphing your graphing or scientific calculator to make sure you can evaluate these just as I did here. So here's the three answers from example two. Now one thing to notice here before we go to the other two examples, notice that uh, the as the angle increases 15 degrees to 50 degrees to 82 degrees, notice that the tangent ratio gets bigger, 0.2679, a little over one, and then up to seven. And that's because the larger the slope, the larger the number to represent the slope. Same as the larger the angle, the higher the slope, so the higher the tangent ratio is going to be. Now, we just, if we knew the angle, we just found what the tangent ratio is. What we're doing in example three is we're given what the tangent ratio is and we're gonna find what the angle is. So in 3a here, we're told the tan of some unknown angle is 2.5. And what you would do in your scientific, with your scientific calculator is there's a function on the calculator called inverse tan. And you see here you see the tan function. If you go second tan, it looks like tan to the power of negative one. That's a function that you can use if you know what the tangent is, you can use it to find the angle. And so I have tan theta equals 2.5 here. In order to find the angle theta, I take the inverse tan of that 2.5. So I would type in my calculator inverse tan 2.5. And the calculator tells me the angle is 68 degrees. So I write theta equals 68 degrees. Of course, I can check that if I take the tan of 68 degrees, it should get pretty close to 2.5. I've done a little bit of rounding. So there's my tan of 68, which is pretty close to 2.5. For B, we're told the tan of the angle is 0 0.2. And so to find the angle, we would type in our calculator the inverse tan of 0 0.2. So inverse tan, 0 0.2, close the brackets. And we get about 11.3. So it, the angle theta is approximately 11 degrees. So example number four, we're asked to find h, which is the uh, height side in this triangle. Now the h would be the opposite side. Here's the 58 degree angle. So the notice that the side directly across the triangle from the 58 degree angle is the h. So this is the opposite side. And the 3.2 meters is the adjacent side. It's the side in the triangle right beside that 58 degree angle. That's not the hypotenuse. So we can put h over here in place of the opposite side, 3.2 in place of adjacent, and the angle theta is 58 degrees, so 58 degrees goes right here. So we now have tan 58 equals h over 3.2. Now the tan of 58 has the denominator of 1. And so when we cross multiply to solve for h, h is equal to the product of 3.2 and the tan of 58 divided by the 1 down here. So h is really just 3.2 times the tan of 58. And so we would evaluate that in our calculator and you should get h to be about 5.1 meters. Last example on the uh, bottom right over here, we're asked to find an unknown angle and you need to know two sides, the opposite and the adjacent in order to find that unknown angle. Now notice the angle theta is up here. So the opposite side would actually be the 1.4 and the adjacent side would be the 0.75. So using tan of an angle is opposite over adjacent, I fill in the 1.4 in place of the opposite side, and the 0.75 is the adjacent side, so it goes right here. Now when we, when we divide 1.4 by 0.75, we get 1.86 repeating, and so the tan of the angle is 1.86 repeating, and so to find the angle, we take the inverse tan, always inverse tan to find an angle of that 1.8667. And we should get theta to be about 62 degrees. So that angle is about 62 degrees. And that's the end of the lesson.